Balaj is looking at the open tasks that are assigned to him and sees that he needs to create a new concept to represent an amoxicillin 300 milligram product. Now that he activated his task by clicking on the sphere icon, note that the active task status on the bottom right of the status bar indicates that he's no longer working on the main repository. All changes that Balaj makes while this task is active will only be visible to Balaj or to anyone else that's working on this task on a different computer. When Balaj saves his new concept, other users working on this task will receive a notification that Balaj has made the change and their workbench will automatically be updated with that change. If they happen to be working on the same concept when someone else made a change within the task, they would be prompted to refresh the editor to update the changes. The notification includes audit information on the user that made the change. When committing changes to an active task, the historical commit message is automatically set to the name of the task. Balaj is going to add an additional relationship to the concept to indicate that the active ingredient is the amoxicillin substance. After Balaj finishes adding his concept, he's going to classify the ontology. Snowall is designed to work with any protege compatible reasoner, and new reasoners can be added by simply copying them to the drop-ins directory and setting the default reasoner preference to your new choice. Because this example uses the standard SNOMED CT expressivity, we can use the ELK reasoner. SNOWALL also supports advanced description logic features like universal restriction and numerical data types. However, these require using a more expressive reasoner like FACT++. While the classification is running, we're going to switch to Orshi's screen. Orshi's task is to create an intentional reference set containing antibacterial medicines. Note that as she activates the task, she changes from the main repository to a branch containing all changes related to this task. Orshi's first step is to create a query to find all the antibacterial products. The query language that we've used is HL7 term info with some additional extensions to support querying other reference sets and querying using numerical data types. The query editor supports content assistance, which means that it can help you with the syntax of the query because it knows what query element is valid at a particular location. The editor also validates the query, pointing out any errors and offering quick fix suggestions to correct some of the more obvious problems. The editor also supports templates that allow commonly used query design patterns to be inserted automatically. Now that the query is complete, we see that there are a total of 1,558 results returned in less than a tenth of a second on Orshi's computer. In the meantime, the classification is completed on Balaj's machine, and we can see the semantic difference between the classification results and Balaj's current ontology. In this case, we see a new inferred relationship that identified an oral dosage phone. If there were redundant relationships or equivalencies incorrectly specified, they would also be identified and displayed here. Since Balaj has an editor active that was affected by the changes to the ontology, he'll be warned that the editor content has changed. Balaj has now completed the changes required for his task and he will mark it as fixed. This crosses the task off his list and makes it appear on the task list for the reviewer. When Balaj deactivates the task and returns to the main repository, the changes that he made to complete the task no longer display in his workbench. For example, the amoxicillin 300 mg product that he created will no longer appear. We can verify this by looking at the destination relationships for the amoxicillin substance. If we sort by effective time to make the newest relationships appear first, we see that the 300 mg product is missing. Now let's switch to my screen. In our scenario, my role is to both review changes made by Balaj and Orshi, and also to promote these changes to the main repository once I'm happy with them. 
In larger organizations, it's likely that multiple reviewers would each confirm that the changes are correct. It's also possible that a different person signs off on the completed task and does the approval. When I activate the task to review the addition of the amoxicillin product, my workbench is updated with the work that has been performed so far. When I switch to the context tab, I can see the changes that have been made related to this task. There are two main sets of changes. The first change is the addition of the new concept, which is indicated by the plus indicator on the concept icon. The change icon on the second item indicates that the RF2 language reference set has been updated to include the preferred term for the new concept. I can review the concept and decide if I'm happy with the changes that have been made. Once I'm happy with the changes, I will indicate that the task has been reviewed by marking it as verified. Now that the task has been reviewed, I have the option of promoting it to the main repository. Once the task has been promoted, it will become visible to anyone working in Snowall on the main branch. To see this, let's look at all our screens simultaneously. We see that Balaj and Orshi both received notifications about the change to the main repository. How did this affect Balaj? If you recall, Balaj added a new amoxicillin 300 mg concept, which didn't appear because it hadn't completed the review cycle. Now Balaj should see his new concept in the main repository. Now we'll back up in time to the point that Orshi received her change notification. Since Orshi is still working on her task, she has the option to synchronize her task with the main repository. Now that Orshi is in sync with the main repository, she will see the new amoxicillin 300 mg concept that Balaj added. She can verify this by running her query again. When she does so, she sees an additional result. The concept history shows that I just added the concept. Now Urshi is going to create a new query type reference set to contain the antibacterial products. It's worth noting that these reference sets are created according to the SNOMED CT release format 2 specification. That means that the reference sets are themselves part of the ontology and can be searched for, queried, and versioned just like any other concepts. Once the new reference set has been created, she can find the query she used to retrieve the antibacterial products, select it, and add it to the query type reference set. The Release Format 2 Query Specification Type Reference Set allows you to add several queries to a single reference set. Here we will only add one query. Or she also needs to specify the reference set that is used to contain the results of running the query. In this example, we're using a simple type reference set. Now we can open the resulting simple type reference set that was created from the query. We can find the 300 mg amoxicillin concept and look at the value sets tab. This tab displays all the value sets that the concept belongs to. Here we see that the concept is included in both the query type reference set and the simple type reference set that was created as a result of the query. Now that Orshi is happy with her changes, she can set the task to fixed. Finally, we'll go back to my screen so that I can review and approve the reference set that Orshi added. 
Snowall makes use of external issue tracking systems like Bugzilla, Track, and many commercial systems. I'm manually requesting to synchronize my list of tasks with the repository in this example instead of waiting for the configurable polling mechanism to deliver the tasks to my inbox. The inboxes are actually repository queries that can be quite detailed and take advantage of task metadata, people working on the task, the workflow, and several other pieces of information. Now that I've activated the task, my context has been updated to match what Orshi saw when she added her reference set. The context refers not only to Snow Owl's data storage mechanism, but also includes all textual indexes, as well as a semantic cache that's used throughout Snow Owl to improve query performance. Creating a query-based reference set is quite useful, as the query can be run whenever the ontology changes. So when a new version of SNOMED CT is released, we can just rerun the queries and look at our task context to see what the changes are to the reference sets. This also provides a workflow to ensure that the query results are run and verified with each release. Now that I've reviewed the reference set, I'll mark the task as verified. I could also reject the task and move it back to Orshi or to her work group. My final step is to promote the change set so the main repository is updated with the changes that were made as part of this task. Now that I've promoted the changes, let's bring back Orshi and Balaj to see them receive the change notifications and to see that the reference set is also in Balaj's repository. We can see Balaj received the notification on the right and Orshi on the left side of the screen. And that's a quick introduction to collaborative authoring in Snow Owl. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop us a note at the address indicated below. We'd love to hear from you.